Let's get right back to business. There's no time like the present. Hopping into the five minute pool, going up against Luan Jogador from Brazil. All right, let's game it out. And if we can, let's play an Elephant Gambit. Professional Elephant Gambiteer has logged on and he's ready to do business. This is how I make a living. I feed my children by playing this position over and over. And we actually see Knight F3, which is a bit of a surprise for me. I hardly ever see this, but a lot of people that are lower rated, under 2000 or something, say that they almost exclusively face only this. So this actually makes me very happy because uh, now I get a chance to hopefully demonstrate some of the ideas in this position. Now, basically, this is how you want to develop your pieces. Uh, I'm gonna be castling this way, and if the opponent castles here, I'm gonna complete development with this. Now, what the heck? That doesn't make any sense to me. Because now you, you can't castle queenside easily. So I feel like this is actually a very large mistake, because if you wanna castle queenside, you better go to e3. And if you're gonna castle kingside, you now have an issue, and the issue is, uh, I can take this and checkmate you. And if you don't castle kingside, I guess I'm going to be bringing all of my pieces into the game and you should get under some massive attack. So this is the basic setup that you want to go for with black. Okay, now they've arrived at the conclusion that they should be doing something different. And now, they, they, I don't know why they stutter stepped though. That can't possibly be correct. The only question is, can I punish this? I'll use my free turn on this move. And now since they are going on the queen side, I'm going to actually switch my forces. I'm going to go here, which I think introduces this idea of playing knight to e4, which could be very, very, very annoying for the opponents. Um, and let's see. So if I just play here, the other option is to play queen to a5 and just pin on this other side, which also looks very good. But why would this not super mega win the queen has to go somewhere and then wherever she goes i take here and it's going to get complicated because then they're going to be taking here intermediate move but then i'm going to have a knight here so i can take and whatever takes here i can do another i can do another knight pin thing okay this is the funniest i, I think queen a5 might also be a very very good move maybe even the best move but this is wild, because now I can exploit this pin this way, make the queen move. And then I might be able to do the same tactic with a different knight, where I put a knight where multiple things can take it, but the knight is invincible. Because if you take this way, you lose a queen. If you take this way, you lose a queen. And if you go back somewhere, oh, okay. I guess that's how we're gonna settle it, huh? That's really funny. I'm surprised that the opponent did this. Wow. I didn't get to demonstrate the hilarity of the other line, though. Uh, so if I wanted to win material... Wait, it's actually, like, equal material. Wait, maybe this was the best way for them. But I was a pawn down, so I gained material. Taking makes sense, though, because then when I take here, I have pressure on this, making it hard to castle. And then I'm threatening to go here. So I will give up my bishop in this situation so that I can go here threatening to take this knight. And pawn takes, I take back with my queen, putting lots of pressure on the opponent. Uh, do I have this move? So if knight takes, I take here. If bishop takes, okay. What? I hadn't figured it all out yet. All right, cool, what the heck? I guess I'm winning because you resigned. But I, I was about to play a psycho move. Do I have some simple win that I'm missing? I don't know, I just go like here? Is, this, is there a simple way of just simply winning? All right, well, I guess that's why you resigned. I hadn't worked it out yet, but the opponent gave me the win. I'll take it. This was a fun one, and a lot of people have asked me about this particular line, so let's, I don't get a lot of opportunities to play against the Knight F3 line, so let's, uh, let's publish every single one that we get. This is the Elephant Gambit, if you've never seen it before. E5, uh, E4, E5. 
knight f3, you play d5. And the way that I like to do it is it doesn't matter what they take. So from a, a theory point of view, it's easy to build a repertoire around this. If they had started with the knight takes, my move would be the same. It's it's knight over here. And after they take the next thing, whether whichever pawn that it is, that's when you play queen takes d5. And uh, you can see now we're attacking this queen. And there's three major lines that you need to be aware of. D4 is what I almost always see. If you're 2300 plus on leechess.org, you're going to be playing D4 like 99% of the time. Uh, I was pared down a little bit in this game, and this opponent came up with knight to F3. And I've been told that this is, at least at some certain level, the way that a lot of people do Like Every single game I play is knight to F3. So if that's you and you're facing that, here you go. Here's a good way of setting up all of your troops. You want to just develop as quickly as possible. Maybe bishop g4 is even a little bit more accurate. It must have to do uh, with some potential knight to b5 in the future. That's what I'm imagining. Bishop to g4 is a good way to start. But the basic plan is to come over here. And I'm guessing maybe there's, there's some knight b5 in some line. Not sure exactly why something would be more accurate than the other move order. But bishop to g4... And your basic setup is to go here and here. Now, if people castle, they very often run into uh, a lot of problems. Bishop to d6 kind of completes the development of all of your minor pieces. You're threatening to remove a defender and go after this. And I will highlight a couple of deeper, higher level tactics that might potentially happen, because this is the most common way that a lot of people seem to uh, be facing when they face the elephant gambit. So after h3, there's usually a couple different things that you can do. Taking is fine. It is also funny and worth pointing out that you could just like castle, or I guess you can castle kingside. And the computer says like, you can't even take here. Knight takes. And one important point though, is that if G3 threatening to come up and bring the rook in, you need to start uh, by bringing your queen into H3 to deny white the ability to bring the king up. If white is able to bring the king up and bring a rook over, they are actually going to be in good shape. But now the problem for white is you can put your knight somewhere that can potentially remove this defender and give you access to checkmate on H2. So what normally happens... Uh, they have to play d4, because if something like this, you would move your knight somewhere where it threatens this guy. This is the basic point. And then after whatever move, remove this defender and deliver a checkmate. So this is an interesting line to pursue, but it's also worth pointing out that on h3, you can just simply take this. And either they're going to try to take back, or they're going to try to move this knight somewhere in order to do a revealed attack on your queen. Looks like moving the knight doesn't happen all too often, probably because it doesn't really work. And there's not a very good place for this knight to go. Uh, like if he did go here or something, you would just bring your bishop back and you'd be threatening a checkmate. So there's not really a good place for the knight to go. So they have to take this. Queen takes h3. And you have some similar ideas of trying to put this knight somewhere uh, that would remove this defender so that you can come in here. And you are a piece down. You do need to be a little bit careful. But most opponents here, by a lot, are playing d4, and this is a very big mistake. Either queen g4 or even knight g4, adding another attacker of the h2 square, gives you a very, very promising attack. Looks like most people here try knight to e4 and run into massive problems uh, after something like this. Let's see exactly how it goes. I don't get to play these lines too much. They must be moving this guy somewhere better. Bishop e5. This is, whoops, bishop, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. My analysis uh, here, and then bishop e5. I've gone into the blue. What the heck? I'm, I'm not that sad. Why am I so blue? Uh, and then you can take back this guy. This knight can never take because there's a mate. And you're threatening to remove the defender. And so this is very strong. White actually has to give up the queen because you're going to be removing the defender uh, and going for this. Anyways, that's just like a little bit of a, a small dive into what could potentially happen. Uh, in these lines if the opponent does castle kingside right away. The attacks are very strong. They can often be very devastating for opponents. But in our game, something unusual happened. I got castled here, and then the opponent played bishop to d2, and there's no way that this is correct. And they realized it on the next move. Like, definitely, if you're going to do this you might as well commit to it so that then you can come here and castle queenside. But if bishop to d2, and then you go here, obviously I get now time to do kind of whatever I want to do. 
which is to wait one turn, just make my last improving move. Now I've gotten all of my pieces into the game. This is why you play a gambit, is to get all your pieces into the game. But now after queen to d2, you're just a little bit slow. Bishop to b4, and already I have an advantage. And uh, opponent doesn't castle right away. I'm actually kind of surprised. Knight e4, the move I played, is the very strongest. Uh, if you just castle queenside or something, knight e4 is still very strong. Queen to a5 is very strong. And these moves are relatively easy to play. Why is queen to a5 not the most accurate? Uh, it gives the opponent the chance to move this rook. Not castle, but move the rook somewhere. Rook d1, rook b8. Ah, and now there's no time for this because you have pawn takes. Ah, okay, so very, very tricky. Um, so good thing I didn't play queen to a5. I went for the best move. And now the funny line that I thought might happen here was the queen would go somewhere. I don't know where. And then after this capture, we would see this. The bishop would go back. And then I could almost do the exact same thing. I guess I would be taking here. When did I think, I thought there was some funny, interesting line here. Have I just confused myself? What was I thinking during the game? So this is about as good as anything. You could also take the bishop and sack the queen this way, but this is also losing. What did I think was going to happen? Ha, huh. man, they, they just, I'm, it, was, it was so long ago. It was simply so long ago. What did I think was gonna happen? Queen somewhere. Takes, takes, takes. And then here? Yeah, I think this is what I was looking at. Okay, so it's not as accurate because you can just take on F3. But this is so funny too, because now if whatever you take or whatever, eh, just taking is strong. Every, I guess, I don't know. What am I analyzing? Everything's winning here. Why am I even bothering analyzing this? It's all winning. But what really happened was they gave up their queen this way, took back the rook, taking this knight is correct in order to take here. And then the opponent actually resigned. And it's a bit surprising because I, I might have been about to do something just wrong. And I don't directly see, like, there's no direct checkmate or anything, but the opponent just resigned. And I might have played here. Who knows? Good thing nothing I can do actually changes the eval very much. But the idea was if knight takes, I would take here. King goes somewhere. Hooray, and this is just good for me. And if bishop takes, then what was I going to do? I guess I was going to take here and then take this. So something like this, this is also a way to win. Yeah, basically everything was just winning. So the opponent made one really slow move and got punished for it. So hopefully that helps. Uh, let me know if this actually does help you, if this helps you whenever you run into knight to f3. I don't see it all that often, but uh, this one is for you guys. If you did like it, please make sure to subscribe, help me grow my channel, and I'll see you guys for the next video.